Hi, hi, hello, my name is Maya with a J and a Y and today uh, I'm gonna do a wrap-up for February. In February I read a lot of books, like a lot of books and I don't remember any of them. It's one of those months when you're just reading and reading and reading and then you check the number and you're like, wow. Wow, that's a number, but like, ask me what I read, I have no idea, so now I'm just gonna go on my Goodreads and check for the first time. I did not prepare for this video, I just wanna... I want my reactions to be organic. Very organic reactions, like, let's see what book I read and then I will be like, mm, I have no idea what happened in this book. I don't remember this book! But let's see. The first book that I read is The Strange Grace by Tessa Grattan and this book is about three characters, one girl and two boys, who are trying to stop this village from sacrificing every seven years. They have to sacrifice one boy from the village, like the best boy, so they can continue living happy, have many harvests. They made this deal with the devil that they send one boy into the forest every seven years. and. Of these three people, this girl and two boys, uh, one boy is chosen, of course, to go into the forest before the time of seven years came. So after the other boy went, four years passed, and then this other boy had to go, and then everyone was like, no, what is happening? We had a deal with the devil. But basically, people go into this book uh, because of the polyamorous relationship between these three characters. And this is why I read this book. And this book was okay. Um, I gave it three stars. I didn't really thought it was that interesting. I just went into it because of this relationship. But the characters weren't studied all that much. They weren't really that in-depth. And the book was pretty short, so I didn't really connect with the characters. And I gave it three stars. The next book that I read... Oh! Is How Not to Diet by Dr. Michael Greger. And this book, he wrote, wrote one of my favorite, favorite books of last year, How Not to Die, about veganism and plant-based diet and blah, blah, blah. It's the best book ever and it will change your life. How Not to Die is definitely more about diet and less about exercise. Obviously, I don't know why I expected more exercise, <laughs> but um, I do recommend this book. I think it's amazing and there's so much research done for this book and there's so many facts that are like I could not believe that they're true. It's a great book, it's like for all of you health freaks. I'm a health freak as well, so yeah, definitely recommend. The next book that I read is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas and that book Obviously, I will read everything by Angie Thomas uh, ever since last year. In the summer, I read um, The Hate You Give and it was... I read it like in one day, I think. It was phenomenal, it was important and necessary, blah blah blah, all of these like fancy words, but also like it got me in the feelings. So yeah, Angie Thomas is definitely one of my favorite authors. Whatever she writes, like I will go and read. Um, so yeah, her ne next book, her second, is On the Come Up. I gave it four stars, it's not as good as The Hate You Give. On the Come Up, I gave it four stars and not five, because, I don't know, it wasn't as dramatic. I think the point of her books is not to be dramatic, but to be, you know, to show a reality. Reality that people refuse to see. And I like dramatics, so four stars, I'm sorry, but I want more like, you know, I don't know. Um, I definitely read fiction to escape from real life, so reading about real life is always kind of like, oh, yeah, this is where we live. I wish we didn't. <laughs> Moving on, the next book that I read ah, was Heartstopper by Alice Osman. I read, this month I read all three volumes of the Heartstopper series of graphic novels. I don't know how many there will be, I think she said like 12? Heartstopper is a graphic novel, it's about two boys falling in love. That's all. <laughs> That's literally all. It's about two boys in high school and their relationship, um, which sounds a bit boring, and it is, um, in the first two volumes, but in the third volume 
the themes get a bit darker, they go more in depth with the characters, especially Charlie. I really like Charlie, so I definitely recommend you to get to the volume 3, because even if you were not that vowed by first two volumes, trust me, volume 3 is where, where it's all at. So I read Blink by Malcolm Gladwell, and I have no idea what this book is about, literally. I do not remember. I gave it three stars. I have no idea. Oh, oh, I remember. Oh. Yeah, um, this is a non-fiction book that talks about how we are reacting to the things like in a blink of an eye, that's why it's called blink, because it's like you see something and what drives you to react the way you do, blah blah blah. Um, I gave it three stars because I remember thinking it's all over the place, this book does not have like one thought that it chases, it, I don't know, like he's trying to prove something but he's proving based on this one thing that happened. I don't know, like, I did not like this book, it's not really science-based, first of all. Second of all, as I said, like, it's all, all over the place, that it doesn't have, like, one thing that it focuses on. So, like, what's the point of this book? I have no idea. I, like, as you can see, I don't even remember reading it. The next book that I read, I really, really liked, and I also listened to it on audiobook, and you should listen to it on audiobook as well, and it's The Infinite Noise by Lauren Shippen. And if you don't know, this book is kind of like a, a prequel um, to the podcast The Bright Sessions by Lauren Shippen, and The Bright, Session, the Bright Sessions is by, about Dr. Bright, and she has patients who are atypicals, which means that they have powers. And in The Infinite Noise, um, this book is about this one patient of hers, a teenage boy, who has the power to feel other people's emotions, and it's about him and um, Adam, his soon-to-be boyfriend, so it's about how they meet and become, like, boyfriends. <laughs> Yeah, it's also like about relationship, um, but it's definitely the type of book that you should read after you listen to the podcast. I know some people say you don't have to listen to the podcast, but I think like if you just read this book without the podcast, it will bore you to death because nothing really happens in this book. It's just like, it's just a beautiful feeling of being with these characters because I finished The Bright Sessions, this podcast, and I was really sad and I wanted more especially from these characters, so listening to them, because the voices were from these two characters from podcast, so just listening to it, it, it just brought me back to the podcast. Although, as I said, nothing really happens. It's really purely subjective opinion, which most of opinions are, if not all. Subjective opinions. Next book that I read was actually raised from the unfinished pile, because I don't know what it is. I just cannot let books be unfinished. It's the upside of unrequited and Becky Abertali has a no new book this year. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna finish this book and give her another chance. I liked her Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens agenda and I liked Leah on the offbeat. Abertali has a really specific writing style. Imagine a blog on Tumblr, a fandom blog, fandom puns, like Doctor Who, Sherlock, Harry Potter. Imagine these puns and this blog in person format. This is how, what Becky Abertali's characters are. And it's really, really annoying. <laughs> it's so unrelatable because no one acts like this, no one speaks like this. This book is about this Molly Peskin, Suso. Okay, Molly Peskin, that's her, that's her name, I forgot. Molly Peskin Susan. And she has a lot of crushes. She has a sister and the sister has like found a girlfriend and now Molly feels left out and she wants a boyfriend. So she has these two potential boyfriends and it's like drama slash relationship with these boys. And the relationship with her sister is totally like out of the picture. I thought the relationship with her sister was so bad. I just didn't like it. I don't know. Her characters are not realistic. I think that's the main main problem. Next book that I read is the best book that I read in February. Next book that I read is the book. It just warms my heart. And at the same time, I, I just got cold all over. This book made me feel so many things. I also made a review of Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. I also made a review so you can check it out here or here or somewhere. This is how much I was impressed by this book. Dark adult fantasy. It's about um, Mia 
and she goes to this assassin school in order to avenge her family. She wants to, needs to kill these three people on her list, so it's kind of like Game of Thrones, like Arya, like she has this goal and she needs to fulfill it. And it's kind of also like um, Harry Potter, because it's this magic school with other teenagers who are also like wannabe assassins, so they're all like sociopaths and psychopaths and everything is like dark and there's a lot of betrayals and friendships and loves and just there's also this cat which is like the shadow cat which Mia has like this shadow magic thing where she has this cat that advises her and takes away her fear so that's beautiful and a lot of other things and everything is like in my review but I love this book I gave it five stars and I cannot wait to go to the part two of Nevernight Chronicles oh it's another DNF revival well it's literally the most hyped up book of 2019. I almost gave it two stars, but I gave it three stars. And it's Red, White, Royal Blue by Casey McKister Stun? McKeeston? I'm sorry. I didn't like this book. I didn't like this book. What I wrote, why I didn't like this book. Ah, everything is fluffy and cartoonish. The characters are unbelievable. Some books have such strong characters that you feel like you know them in real life. But this book is the exact opposite. Throughout the whole book, I felt like I was reading a book, nothing more. I was not in there, in the plot, among the characters. I was acutely aware of how unrealistic it all was, and I don't mean the plot, but the execution. Reading this book, I've come to realize that I love people dealing with real problems like past traumas, anxiety and depression alongside love, not just love, like some kind of middle school fantasy fairy tale come true. I need my people to be real people with more dimensions and layers and secrets. Not like Red, White, Royal, Blue, where everything seemed like some fan fiction. I was really mean, like, oh my god. On Goodreads, I'm so mean sometimes. I don't even, like, realize. Yesterday, I was going through my reviews on Goodreads and I was, like, shocked at some reviews that I wrote. But yeah, I gave it three stars because last, the last 10, 15% of the book were really great. If this book started with the last 15% and then went on from there, it would be a great book. Yeah, so this book is about the Prince Henry and the president's son and the two of them fall in love. They're like enemies and then from enemies to lovers. This is like my favorite thing ever because I don't know, I just love reading about it and I don't know what it says about me, but I don't know, it's like the best thing ever. Um, but this book does not have that type of thing. Like, I was promised enemies to lovers, but I got kind of like lukewarm enemies to instant. It wasn't that journey, trip, that pining period, that hate, but you find yourself liking them and then hating yourself and being like, why do I like them? And then and then hating them on the outside because you want to make yourself hate them but then it's kind of going to like and love and you don't know what to do with yourself do you know what i mean the the journey of enemies to lovers the 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 the, the long i don't know how to like ugh. I got all worked up now. Later on, I will talk about some books that I read. The best enemies to lovers story ever in the entire universe, okay? I will, I will say it later. But for now, just, just know that enemies to lovers in red, white, royal, blue is not even near anything. Um, this is a really fluffy book. It's really a feel-good book. Um, so if you like those, that type of book, this is a great book for you. For me, I love dark themes and characters that suffer and are hurt very badly. I don't know why. I like my characters to suffer, so this also says a lot about me. The next book that I read was The, Inexplic the Inexplicable Logic of My Life by Benjamin Alier Sands. He wrote Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of Universe, which is one of my favorite, favorite books ever, so of course I was gonna read some of his other works. The timing for this book when I started it just wasn't right. And I almost DNF'd the book. I didn't DNF it, I continued to read it and then I realized, wow, it's so true when they say that the timing for a book is the most important thing ever. But this book is about this boy just became senior in high school and he got, he's got all of these problems like with his best friend Sam and she has problems with her mother so this bothers him. Also like he's adopted uh, and his father is gay so he's like scared for his father and he also wants to know about his biological father and mother his grandma has cancer so this is also one of his problems it's written in a diary kind of format you feel like this boy is talking to you through like 
um, diary entries or letters or something like that. The chapters are really short, hard hitting. I don't know, each chapter is really like, ooh, you know, chills. This whole book is bittersweet. I would call it like really, really bittersweet because it offers hope, like hope in the future, but it also like tells you that not everything is good and you can't change stuff that are not good because there would be no light without dark. I really recommend it to everyone who feels sad and lonely or maybe, you know, this seasonal depression thing. But don't go into this book expecting Aristotle and Dante because it's not about that. It's not even like similar. <laughs> Uh, next the book is actually a graphic novel and it's also one of my favorite books that I read in February. My favorite things, uh, thing is Monsters. Um, wow, where, where to start? Uh, first of all, it's not a supernatural novel. I thought it was. I thought it was about this woman who can turn into a werewolf, um, but it isn't. It's about this girl who wants to be a monster, so in the comic she's depicted as a monster and she just sees herself as a monster because she wants to be a monster because her favorite thing is monsters. Um, but this is not a supernatural novel, it's actually... it's set in the 60s, I think, and it's... it deals with really serious social problems like bullying, racism, just living in the 60s and this girl also like wants to be a detective so she wants to be a monster detective <laughs> at the beginning i didn't really know where the plot was going but as the story progressed i saw that it was actually about this girl karen uncovering who the murderer of her neighbor is her neighbor anka and she's from germany and jewish and then she was murdered um, just a few days before this story started in the graphic novel so Karen wants to discover like who the murderer was Anka's story is so fucking hard-hitting and beautiful and horrible at the same time I gave this novel five stars because I love it it's the best thing ever and I totally recommend it art is so freaking beautiful it is different the next book is also a DNF revival <laughs> because I have a problem I don't know I... I I do know that I don't like that book, but I just... something is telling me that I have to read it. Finish it. Especially if it's like a hyped up book. I don't know, I made myself read it all the way, just so I could like rate it and say I hate it. I don't know, it's such a waste of time. Anyway, it's Sarah J Maas and Court of Thorns and Rose Roses. It's um, Beauty and the Beast retelling, which sounds freaking amazing. Beauty and the Beast is my favorite fairy tale ever. This is really not about fantasy or the world. It's about this main character Feyre and Tamlin and their relationship. It's really, I would genre this book as romance, not fantasy, because it's really not about these fantastical elements as well, at all. Um, it's kind of enemies to lovers type of thing. It's a pretty instant lovey. Writing was okay. We have reached the point where I can talk about the books that I reread with the best enemies to lovers plot ever in the entire universe of all enemies to lovers plots and romances and like i'm i'm not against romance i don't want to read romance as the main thing but romance like in the wider context and especially if it's enemies to lovers and especially if it's queer like <laughs> this is my Oh, this is my type of thing. I cannot even like. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you which book it is. I just. I just need a moment. I just need a moment. It's not the book that will ever be type of book that will be read in schools or anything. It's just a feel good, fun book. It's The Captive Prince by C. S. Packet. I don't know how to pronounce it. I was so. I wanted to read it so many times, but I was just so scared that I would hate it the second time around because all the things that I heard about it were like not really good things. I'm so glad I reread it. <laughs> I'm so glad. I needed some distraction. I needed something that was just like kind of trashy, but also like really fun and beautiful. There's a lot of trigger warnings, so I'm just gonna put it out there. The first one is like, just get it over with and gets to the second and third one, which are the best, beautiful, most wonderful things in the entire universe. Lauren, one of the characters, one of the main characters, is such a bitch but also he's like cold and beautiful and everyone wants him but he doesn't want anyone and he's like 
has a lot of traumas that he has to deal with and oh my god i don't know i cannot i cannot this book books like these books and this like enemies to lovers plot is everything it's literally like the conversations between my main characters the dialogues in this are so smart and like the whole plot is so smart totally recommend these books they're beautiful um the next book i read was something for my research and school blah 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 it's the history and culture of japanese food and i'm really curious to see how japanese diets changed so much because they were like shintoistic buddhist diet before and then suddenly like they started eating meat and there was this meat ban all the way to Edo period, like all the way to 18th, 19th century. So I'm researching about that and I read this book, History of Japanese Food by Ishike. The last book I read in February was Sapiens by mm, Yuval Noah Harari. It's the non-fiction, I, you probably heard it, it's like about the history of humankind. This book, I give it four stars but maybe it's more like three stars i don't know i wanted to be more impressed he said a lot of things that to me felt like really deeply subjective things so these were all of the books that i read in february i hope you liked this video although it's all over the place and this tea is not the best i'm making myself to like it if you like this video give it a thumbs up Subu skrubre skrubu subscribe to my channel. Channel. Subu subscribe to my channel. If you want, if you don't want, you don't have to. This has been my wrap up. Bye. 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 Bye.